With over 35 years of ministry, Mount Zion Church is located in Clarkston, Michigan. You may have seen us while driving in I-75, just north of Great Lakes Crossing. We invite you today to join us as we go inside to hear a fresh and relevant word in this new day. Mount Zion, helping you experience the best of life. It's time to have the confidence in the earth and in our lives that God wants his glory to be revealed in and through each and every one of us. Now, having said that, I want to go to this scripture. It's in the book of Romans. And as I mentioned last week, the book of Romans chapter 1 talks about the evil that was in the world and the apostles' time, and obviously evil that oftentimes is in the world in which we live today. And in speaking about the conditions of the time and the impact of the lives of the people, he says, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools They changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creepy things. Just like Don was mentioning about evolution. Evolution is the idea that life as we know it kind of spontaneously came about. Uh, Out of nothing, there became something, or in their mind, they usually go back to something and say, well, this is why this became this or this became that. But, But the idea is that Nature is a power within itself. That's why we often hear the term mother nature. Well, we as Christians need to understand something. We don't follow mother nature. We follow Father God. Amen? We believe that all the earth was created. It was created for a purpose, and it's when we recognize that that we can come to the place of our fulfillment. So the world thinks they're so wise and yet they become foolish in the imaginations of their heart. They become debased in their thinking because their knowledge is not correct. Now, this past Thursday night, I went and saw the movie Noah, and uh, I'm a movie-going person, and so for several months when I heard they were going to make an epic film about the Bible, I was all excited about it, went and was very disappointed because it was actually totally contrary to the presentation of the story in the Bible. Although there was a man who was able to build an ark and survive a flood, the rest of the story was totally wrong. It basically, in the movie, they project that the sin of mankind was they were destroying their environment. So when the movie first opens, you see Noah and his family, there are no trees because mankind has destroyed the environment. Then they start to show the cruelty to animals, and it's so bad, people are literally eating those animals. And the bad person in the movie is a guy who keeps making the statement that we were created in the image and likeness of God and we're supposed to have dominion. And of course, he even had a primitive gun that he had created, which was this movie's presentation uh, about an agenda that's out there in the world today that, well, you can take your sides on all these things, but you have to understand something. It's not what God says. Amen? We have to understand that God did create us in his image and likeness. Yes, we do the wrong things, but God helps us get it right. Amen? And that although we do not always exercise our stewardship correctly, we believe that God wants us to come to that place where we are able to do those things. It is not true in the Bible that God is against the environment, for sure. There are many things contained in the scriptures that talk about God's desire to be friendly to the environment, and and certainly there's laws about improper treatment of animals. These are not bad concepts. It's just when they become the predominant thinking that we become problems in the plans of God. And I say we become the problems because it says they profess to be wise, but they became fools. God wants us to be people who care about our environment, the world in which we live from the perspective of Christian stewardship. I know I've always loved animals. I remember when I was a kid, I was always wanting my mom to give me a pet. Oh, mom, can I have this? I remember one neighbor had rabbits. Mom, can I have a rabbit? We had other neighbors back then. This area around here was quite country. So we had neighbors with chickens, pigs, about everything you can think of. Whenever I see an animal, I wanted one. She's always saying, no, no, no. And I thought her problem was she didn't like animals. And I realized as I got older, she actually was trying to help the animals by not putting them under my care. (laughs) 
She used to always complain because in those days when she'd go up the street, a lot of neighbors had dogs they didn't tie up, so they'd be coming after her. And she'd always say, these neighbors, they need to tie up the dogs that are chasing me. Well, I noticed when I walk up the road, the dogs were running in the opposite direction. I don't know why that was. When I had kids, they got a dog called Thor, and that dog was always trying to run away, and it would jump over the fence, it would dig under the fence, and my kids were always, why is this dog running away? And I said, well, he, he probably heard about my reputation, which isn't very good with pets. But I loved animals, but I learned, out, as, learned as I got older, I do love wild animals better because they're easier to take care of. <laughs> Come on, I learned the same thing about farming. Wanted to be a farmer when I was a kid. Well, I realized I didn't really want to be a farmer. I wanted to be a harvester. So how many of you know to be a harvester, you have to be a farmer? I didn't want to do that. I found out that I could grow weeds better than everything else. So now I love weeds. I'm into nature. I say all that to say I have no problem with natural things. I love natural things. But I do believe that God is the creator of all things. And that if his, his understanding is not the basis of my understanding, what in our mind seems to be a good thing becomes a bad thing. And that's the problem is many times it's well-intentioned people doing the things they do, walking in a way they walk because they don't understand the power of God. How many know we understand the power of God? Now that's why this next verse of scripture is important. To each and every one of us it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being a priest for me. And because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. Knowledge has power. The ministry of Mount Zion began over 35 years ago. It began because we noticed there were a lot of people who were finding God and believing in the power of God whose lives were still finding themselves on the path of destruction because they didn't have the proper knowledge. And so we've always taught the importance of Bible training, understanding how important it is to have a relationship with God through his word because even after you're born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and hear all about the greatness of the power of God, if you don't have the proper understanding of the word, you're not going to experience the fullness of what God has. And it talks about the forgetting of our children if we don't keep the law of God. Now, we're not under the law of Moses, but we are under the constraints of the word of God. And when you live a word-oriented life, you're going to find the blessing of God, and that blessing is also going to go to your children. That's why we have to be very careful and while I'll talk about something like a movie like this because a lot of Christians, because we don't have a proper understanding of the scriptures, we'll watch a movie and because it's about a man who builds an ark in a flood, we, we can assume all the auxiliary things are true as well. Many times Christians will say, well, we can't complain about that. We should just be glad the world is making movies that have to do with the Bible. I would rather you not make a movie about the Bible if it's the wrong information, amen? <laughs> God's raising up Christians these days who are making films, and it's in its infancy stage, so you can tell, you know, there's a proficiency that needs to be developed. But I just saw a movie, God is Not Dead, and I thought, wow, Christians are really kind of stepping up the bar of things, and we're going to see God do some amazing things because the people of God are going to realize that God wants us to be salt and light in our generation. But we have to be a people who understand about the power of the word of God. Now, this next verse of scripture takes us back again to the book of Romans, and it says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Now, the mind is not just a computer. Give it a certain amount of information. It calculates the response and comes out with something. Our mind is impacted by our emotions, how we feel. Our mind is impacted by our past experiences. It's certainly true that our minds are impacted by our culture. There are so many things that impact our mind. So it's absolutely essential thing that we recognize that God wants us to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. And we have to understand that the key to proper thinking, because this scripture says, because they did not have God in their knowledge, they became debased in their thinking because without God directing the thinking, all kinds of things can direct it. Personal ambition, emotions, and all these things. So how many know we want to have God in our knowledge? Now, I want to share this with you because this is so important because 
Oftentimes, as Christians, we fail to recognize that when that scripture is being spoken, it's talking about God in all our knowledge. That means if I'm a Christian and I'm in economics, if I'm in politics, if I'm out there in in the world of social, helping people, getting involved in the world, we should know and understand that God wants to be a part of every aspect of the human condition. You don't just have a spiritual life that includes God. God wants to be in our knowledge. He's talking here about people in science who don't have God in their knowledge, and they create uh, ideas that are contrary to God. And some people think, well, you know, don't mix God with science. No, mix God with everything, Terry. Put God in all your knowledge, amen? Upon her head, a planted hive of straw, which fortified her visage from the sun. Where on the thought might think, sometime it saw the carcass of beauty, spent and done. Life is a performance. Do it well. For more information on our theater program, go to mountzionarts.org. All right, that'll be 375, sir. How much? I said that'll be 375. Oh, you must be thinking about just the popcorn. How much is everything? No, that covers all of it. Really? The Mount Zion Cinema offers you an affordable night out at the movies. For a list of all upcoming movies and showtimes, visit us at mountzion.org. So, babe, you seem to be enjoying the movie. Yeah, I just can't believe how little I paid for all this. I'm going to go and get some more popcorn. Church, we got to change the culture Amen. by being Christians in this world, by being salt and light. That's what the scripture means in a very practical way when it says, arise and shine so the glory of the Lord can be seen upon you. It's saying, don't just live like everybody else. Realize you are a child of the Most High God, that you live in a kingdom that is a kingdom of God, and when you begin to walk in the power of this kingdom, you'll know what it is to know righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. How many know the Lord can give you peace in the midst of a trouble, trial, or difficult time? God can give us joy and speak them for the glory. I mean, I tell you, the kingdom of God is a wonderful thing. And so we have to realize that as we live in the kingdom and we put God in our knowledge and in every area of our life, how we rule and work in our families and how we work in our business and how we work, it brings the blessing of God and the light of God into every area of our life. God's people need to realize we live in a land today that needs our influence, needs our prayers, needs our uh, involvement in understanding how we can impact the world by bringing Christ to every area of life. And so we want God in our knowledge. And we should remember how important that is that we want to integrate God into every area of our thinking, every area of our life, because it's only in them that we can think right and find the true success that God wants us to have. Can we say amen to that, church? Amen. Give the Lord a praise on that as we go to the next verse of Scripture. It says, Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You will know the truth, and the truth shall do what? What will the truth do, church? How many want to be free? I know that that God brings our us financial freedom, social freedom, personal freedom, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Now, having said that, I want to go to the story of Noah, as we've read today at many of the scriptures, so that we can understand literally how powerful we can be in the world in which we live when we walk with God. The Bible tells us that the Lord in Genesis chapter 6 was sorry that he had made man on the earth. He was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But, I love this, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But, church, I want you to understand something. There could be judgment coming upon our nation. There could be problems in your family. It could look impossible, 
but God. Amen? And in this case, it was but Noah. And it would be wonderful if in our situation, God could look down upon us. Last week, I talked about the grace of God, which is God's favor being bestowed upon us. By grace, you have been saved. So you need to know you're just like Noah. If you enjoy dancing, be sure to check out Mount Zion School of Performing Arts. From hip hop to ballet, we have it all. And starting as early as ages three up through adult, whether you're a beginner or advanced, we have something for you. So check us out online at mountzionarts.org. All right, that'll be 375, sir. How much? I said that'll be 375. Oh, you must be thinking about just the popcorn. How much is everything? No, that covers all of it. Really? The Mount Zion Cinema offers you an affordable night out at the movies. For a list of all upcoming movies and showtimes, visit us at mountzion.org. So, babe, you seem to be enjoying the movie. Yeah, I just can't believe how little I paid for all this. I'm going to go and get some more popcorn. Can you imagine God looking at the whole planet and saying, well, this is a mess. But Noah... Now, that's the way God looks at each and every one of us, and I don't know about you, but I think it's incredulous to think that God thought that about me or God thought that about you, but if you have found grace in the eyes of God, God has looked upon you and saw that you're a solution for something. Come on. How many glad you have favor with God? With all the billions of people in the world, and some of you know that God kind of picked you out of a whole group of people, for some reason, you need to know something. God has said, you found grace. I've chosen you, says the mighty God. Now, with that grace, just like we said, comes faith and something that we have to act upon. That's why this next verse of Scripture is important. It says, Lamech lived 182 years, and he had a son. He called his name Noah, saying, this one will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. Now, I have a question over this verse, and I want to leave that with you for a moment. Was grace random? Now, the word Noah literally means rest, quiet, and peace. Lamech was a man who had a son, and he was very aware how bad the world was because of the curse that was upon the ground. Now, when his son was born, he called his name Noah. This wasn't just a, any old name. It had a meaning because in the midst of a time when violence and corruption were filling the earth, he had a son. He said, I'm going to call his name Noah. I'm going to call his name Peace. I'm going to call his name Tranquility. In other words, it was a parent saying concerning their child, I'm going to believe that things are going to be different because this one was born. You see, it's very important that we would understand that God's grace is not random. Somewhere along the line, somebody was praying for you. Somebody was believing in you. Somehow, God looked upon you. And oftentimes, this is so important to understand, that there, it is because somebody, and in this case, a parent, made a choice, there's going to be a recipient of grace. become the remedy for a long day or a booth the gathering place for old friends when can a class provide answers to life's hardest questions it happens when a place becomes committed to improving the most important thing in your life you the district just one mile north of Great Lakes Crossing where life happens better 
And so that's an encouragement to every parent that's here today to recognize the most important thing you can give to your children is a Christian relationship with God, a Christian lifestyle that will bring a difference in their life and give them the ability to be salt and light in the world in which they live. I love our Sunday school teachers. I appreciate people that teach our children. How many can say amen to that? Come on. And if you have children in Sunday school, you need to take some time to say something to those teachers and those workers. Thank you so very much that you take time with my kids. We usually notice when things aren't what we want. How many know we should be thankful for what we have? Come on. We as a local church, we have our family, our movies oftentimes, so people can have family activities. We have family time at the WCA, but we have an amazing program where you can learn the word, teach the word, and we need people who are connected, parents who are behind it, because church, we can make a difference in the world. And I know that's what I have an expectation of, and I really appreciate it. My parents have given me more inspiration because when I was growing up, my my dad was a macho man, but when he was 62 years old and retired, he has become Mama Jean's chauffeur and at his services, picking up people that are slain under the power of God. And so for now, 20 years, they've been a team in ministry here at our local church. And I look at that as an example for me as a... As a son, you know, I say, okay, Lord, that tells me even this year I'm celebrating the 20th anniversary of my 40th birthday party, and I still have 22 good years to do something for the kingdom. Amen? Our example and our commitment as parents make such a difference. And as Christians, all of us, as the children of God, are called to make a difference in our world. Having said that, I want you to know that Noah had an influence upon his life, but then the Lord come to him and says, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark covered inside and outside with pitch. Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him, so he did. He had faith that was given to him by favor, and guess what he did? He acted upon that faith. God said to Noah, now, Noah, I have a plan, but you can't just be passive towards this plan. You got to know I'm doing something for you, but you got to respond to it. There's something for you to do. Now, it's going to be God's power that's going to make it heaven. It's going to be God's provision that's going to pave the way. But when I speak, will you listen and also say, okay, Lord, your servant hears? Because you see, the Bible says faith without works is dead, that we need to follow on in activity with that which God has given to us. And the context of that verse is talking about Abraham. We have all these patriarchs, Noah and all the people in the Bible. God spoke to them, and they said, yes, what am I going to do now? I'm excited. I, I've walked the walk of faith in my life, and many of you here have shared that walk as your people of faith. I tell you, there's nothing more powerful than to take the walk of faith. It's exhilarating. It's powerful. It's dynamic. Sometimes it goes against our natural grain of thinking, but I want you to know something. In the end, you will always find God is a faithful God. Amen? When things looked impossible and the judgment began to happen, Noah said, okay, I'm going to do what you want me to do. And I remember several years ago, the Lord spoke to me, and he said that we needed as a local church to be prepared because there was another move of God coming. There's another awakening to impact the world in which we live. I've been preparing my heart. I've been preparing the church. That's why we built this building. We, We believe in living by faith. And Noah, when he was building that ark, you know, he was building it for 150 years. You know, it had never rained before Noah. The Bible tells us that. It says that the plants were watered by the vapor that was in the world. And I I literally saw how that worked because in Lima, when we go down there, they don't get rain hardly ever at all. And so there are natural plants that grow there in the Lima area who get their water by absorption because there's no rain. So that's what the Bible says is the way all all the earth was at the time because there was a canopy uh, that was surrounding the earth. But but the important thing to recognize in this is 
You don't know there's anything of rain. You, you, you don't understand what a flood is. You have no idea how this is going to possibly work, but God tells you to mil- build this boat out in the middle of nowhere, and you can be sure everybody told him he was nuts, everybody told him he was crazy, and you can be sure some days he woke up and said, I'm nuts and I'm crazy. Come on. But he kept on building and kept on moving forward. And the day came when everything God spoke had come to pass. And I'm telling you, church, just like I tell you, I've received the prophecy 30-some years ago when I graduated from Minister Candidate School. A prophetess from the last move of God said, the day will come when the floodgates will be open, says the Lord. And in that day, there will be a mantle of Elijah that speaks about a double portion. I tell you, there's a flood coming. It's not a natural flood. It's a flood of God's anointing, and at the same time, there's going to be trials in the midst of that, but God's going to have a prepared people. Church, we got to be prepared. We need to be ready. God is preparing each and every one of us for such a time as this. And like Noah, he has favored us by coming into our lives. Like Noah, he has spoken, and like Noah, we have to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Come on. Hallelujah. In this next verse of scripture, it tells us that during the divine long suffering of God, he waited in the days of Noah. The reason that the flood took 150 years is because God was being patient. He, he's a God who's always given people a chance. And while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Now, this is a beautiful picture of water baptism, these scriptures tell us. The flood came, and for the unrighteous, it was a disaster. But for the righteous who had been prepared, it actually was a saving grace. It's a light figure of baptism, the Bible says. When we have repented of our sins, we need to go to the waters of baptism, and we need to go by faith because we need to believe that God can do something in those waters that will deliver us from the power of the world. Amen? I want to keep reading this scripture a little bit more because it says the like fi- figure, it says it is an anatype. The Old Testament stories have pictures for the New Testament, which now saves us baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And those of you who are here today, if you've never given your life to the Lord, you need to turn to him. And if you've said, I want to be a Christian, then you need to go to the waters of baptism so that God can do a work in your heart. But we also have to see this as a picture that whenever God tells us to do something, it becomes our protection and our safety and our deliverance when we're willing to do what he says for us to do. God has anointed Pastor Lauren to reach the church with a fresh message for this day. If you would like further information, we also invite you to visit us on the web at mountzion.org where you can hear more of Pastor Lauren's messages and find out about our ministries. If you're visiting the Metro Detroit area, we invite you to worship with us at Mount Zion Church. Thanks again for watching.